It's looking good out there. Perfect to be outside, perhaps in the garden. Perhaps to take a couple of photos, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> this morning, it is all about photos in the garden. Yeah, but what's the best camera to use when snapping shots of your favorite plants? Well, we've got the answer, and KCAL 9 Sylvia Lopez shows us. We are in the garden today talking about garden photography techniques with Nick Federoff from right, ready? ThingsGreen.com. Yeah. Right, there you go. <laughs> Whoa, that's an antique you've got there, Nick. It sure is. Isn't that kind of oh fun? Oh my gosh, I haven't seen one of those you for years. You know, photography has actually changed so much throughout the years, and garden photography is just a blast. There's just so many things that can happen with it. And of course, you know, back in the day, they were using these big, bulky cameras to the point and shoot. Oh, yeah. Remember those things? Oh, yeah, yeah, the old yeah. Polaroid clunky cameras. old things. And then, of course, who could forget the, oh. the old 110 camera? I had a couple of those myself. <laughs> and this right here it reminds me of like a little spy camera because oh it just gosh, goes, yeah. goes back and forth That's like that. That's great. That was Ironically, a all this stuff is, uh, we have a little, there's a little museum called the, uh, called the Things Green Learning Center, uh -huh. and people can go online to seeusonline.org, and they can see all this camera stuff. It's and, just really good. And you know, speaking of museums, we should say that we're at the Natural History Museum today. Yeah, we are in Los Angeles. And what's really cool about this place is that this particular garden doesn't open until June. So people are getting a little sneak, uh, that's June of next year. Of next year, yeah. 13. Yeah. But when it does, you're gonna have a great place to come and take some beautiful pictures. You indeed can, you indeed can. And in order to take those great pictures, we need to have the right cameras. And these right here are, and you have to buy them from the right place too because just to go to the market and buy them isn't necessarily the best thing right. because there's not a lot of stuff there. I highly recommend we go to Sammy's Camera. Okay, that's a good Sammy's, one. There's a whole bunch of those stores all over the place in Southern California and they have knowledgeable people that can help us out. For instance, these right here are your point and shoot cameras and they're just real simple to where they, right. you just take them and you open them and turn them on and, and, and once, they're, once they're on, you just point it right. and shoot it. Put it, it on automatic and, and then of set. course on the back over here, you have all of your little push buttons and stuff like that. Right. The best part about these fancy cameras is that you really can't mess up mm -hmm. because you can actually find the button to reset the whole thing. Right. So that's not a problem. Right. Now, if you want to do some really hardcore gardening and photography, this is actually an entry level that we got over at Sammy's and it's a Sony. And of course it has the little display screen on here. Nice. So so if you wanted to actually take this and, and shoot up high or shoot low and, and turn your turn your screen around, you can right. do that. And that's one of the things about garden photography that we have to remember. Think outside the box. Okay. So when we're gonna take a picture of something, right. feel free to turn the all camera right. a little bit. Right. Go at the top, right. lay down on your and stomach, angles, right. do all this kind of fun Make stuff. Make it unique. Now this right here has what they call a macro lens. A macro lens means you can get real tight in there. Whereas a camera like this is better for open shots. Right, okay? right. Even though you can, you can go in. Well, with flowers and plants, you're gonna wanna get really tight a lot of the time. A lot of times you're gonna wanna do yeah. that. And what we're, what you wanna do is, is, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to do this. This is a really fun hobby. For instance, you're gonna need reflectors. Okay. And reflectors are so important because, you know, we have, if you have over here, you have a, it's, you have a shadow, right? Mm -hmm. So you could take these reflectors and you could put them on there and it'll actually lighten up. This is a piece of cardboard. Just That's a white piece of cardboard. Just a white piece of cardboard. In fact, if you can see it on my shirt, see how it's kind of lighting, right? lightening up? Mm -hmm. It changes the color a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it does. So you could use you could use the cardboard. You don't have cardboard, use a piece of paper. Okay. That's okay, use nice. a piece of paper. Uh -huh. Oh, you know what I wanted to show on this? Sometimes you don't want to use the, the white part at oh. all and you want to sh actually shade the whole plant and you get different colors and textures. Right. And of course, since you're sh shooting close, you're gonna get in and it works out very well that way. Now, you can see that we have uh, one of my bearded buddies here in the garden. Love him, he's yeah. a cutie. <laughs> you know, when you're talking about garden photography, it doesn't necessarily mean it's all about just the plants. Right. You can include other things inside of your garden photography. Use props, use shovels, rakes, use garden gnomes. Hey, you could even use a person. <laughs> I'd like to put you in one of my shots. Well, I think that would be great. Well, a super addition. Yeah. So, so that's going to be real excited. Well, I have to tell you, the folks over at Sustainable Environmental Education, uh -huh. it's a nonprofit 501c3 organization, they're putting together garden photography classes. Oh. So if anybody wants any information, of course, you can go on my website, csonline.com. I mean, csonline.org is their website. Ours is thingsgreen.com. And you can see when the classes and the schedule are. There's qualified teachers who, have, who know all about the information about here. And you can really get into there and see how it works and how you can get 
get that flower just yeah. to pop right. out at you. Right. Get this basil in. And when you take the picture, you could smell the basil just coming through the photo. You know, one of the things that the internet has done is really created a lot of horrible photographers <laughs> you know, with, the, with the little cell phones and stuff like right. that. The better the camera, yeah. the better the photo. Okay. You and can it's just that simple. It. Awesome. Nick, thank you. Thanks thank for you. all your tips as always. Enjoyed thank it. Thank you very much.